Hey guys, it's David from Motor Press. Guess what? I have a secret to share with you. Let's go. Welcome back. So what is this secret thing I want to share with you? Well, it's more like a secret thinking or secret approach in terms of how to buy a car or more specifically, when to buy the car. Now you guys know that for me, I like to buy the first year of all the new models, whether it's a brand new model or not, because I want to showcase you this all new model and so it doesn't matter to me if it's reliable or not I'm going to buy the first year anyway and for that matter I actually want to know all the problems and issues that will come up in the first year so I can experience it firsthand and talk about it with you guys but if I'm recommending a car to a friend or family or someone I know very well well I'm not going to recommend the first year maybe not even the second year so what is this kind of secret approach that I'm going to share with you well I'm going to make it very simple and tell you exactly what to do to avoid having problems when you buy a car and you want to keep it for a long time. So first of all, regardless of the brand, make, model, or country of origin, just don't buy the first year anymore. And this is something that is surprising for me to say because in the past I said that, generally speaking, don't buy the first year, but if it's a Toyota or Lexus built in Japan, it's most likely safe and it might be okay. And for the most part, it has been okay. Even if I buy a first year of a car that was built in Japan, and it's coming from Toyota or Lexus. But lately, even the cars from Japan, even if it's a Toyota or Lexus, and maybe coming out of a legendary factory like Tahara plant, they're still giving us problem the first year. So I can no longer recommend the first year purchase for any brand, any make, any model, regardless of where they are built. So that's my first rule. Don't buy first year, period. I might actually even say, don't buy the second year because a lot of brands and a lot of models are causing some issues on the second year as well. I would say third year is the safest if it's an all new model. So let me clarify a few things. If it's an all new model from an established brand, so not a brand new uh, automaker, then don't buy the first year. I wouldn't buy the second year either but I think it's very safe to buy the third year. So I recommend the third year. However, if that model is all new and it's also coming from brand new factory, like let's say they just built a brand new factory in the US somewhere and it's a whole new workforce, I'm not even sure if I would recommend the third year. I might wait for the fourth year. Now, based on history, most automakers will refresh or facelift their car on the fourth year, sometime on the fifth year, depending on the model. Usually trucks and SUVs are later, so they'll do fifth year refresh, but cars that are competing in a high volume segment, such as a crossover may refresh on the fourth year because they want to keep it uh, competitive. So normally I would say buy the facelifted year. So because that's when they fix everything up, that's when they are able to re-engineer things that they couldn't re-engineer before. And so everything from transmission calibration to updates the powertrain putting new safety features changing the infotainment system all that stuff happens in the facelift year and usually that facelift year is the best year to buy because they fixed everything however there's a big catch and that is lately the facelift is no longer facelift it's almost like a new model because they might replace the powertrain with a different engine they might replace the entire software with a whole new software, which we have been seeing quite a bit lately, uh, and or other changes as well. So now the facelift is more like almost new model, uh, and uh, they're calling it a facelift just because the body and everything hasn't changed. And in that case, I wouldn't buy the first year of facelift because especially with the software changes and some hardware changes, they tend to have a lot of bugs. So for example, I noticed recently driving some of the newer models that have just gone through facelift, have gone through a lot of, lot of problems on the first year of facelift. So on the fourth year, or potentially fifth year, if they have a facelift, I would actually avoid that year as well and buy the second year of the facelift. So the year after the facelift, that's probably the best year to buy. So let's go through this one more time. Don't buy the first year. I wouldn't buy the second year either. Third year is a good year to buy, so that's definitely a recommended year. The fourth year, if it's a facelifted year, don't buy it. If it's not the facelifted year, go ahead and buy it. Unless you're not happy with the technology and you want to wait for the facelift to improve the technology or improve some of the features, then yeah, you might want to wait a year or two for the facelift to happen. Otherwise, non-facelifted fourth year is safe to buy. 
if the fourth or maybe the fifth ear is the facelifted ear and they made substantial changes all around including updates the software to infotainment system and technology i wouldn't buy the first year of the facelift which is usually fourth or fifth year i hope you're still following me with this and i will wait for a second year which is either fifth or sixth year and this is where it gets confusing because most manufacturers in the past will replace the model on the seventh year so usually first year is all new new model second year they make some running changes in the factory to smooth things out third year is a stable year and they'll try to ramp up production fourth year is usually the facelifted model year and they'll make all kinds of engineering changes that they couldn't make or they couldn't do before fifth year is a second year of facelift again the best year to buy very safe usually the last year of that model and then the sixth year is when they introduce a whole new model again and the cycle repeats itself but nowadays with all of the cost involved in supply chain and manufacturing and engineering it has shifted about one or two years so now you still have the first year all new model second year is somewhat questionable year same as what i just explained to you third year is the safest year but now the fourth year is not the facelifted model and they don't make any changes maybe color or fabrics in the seats and then the fifth year is when they do facelift lately with new models especially trucks and suvs and then therefore i wouldn't buy the fifth year but i would buy the sixth year which is the second year of the facelift and then uh, they would actually not change the car for seventh year and then on the eighth year they will bring a new model so that's the two patterns it could be a six year cycle or eight year cycle or in some cases like toyota trucks they haven't changed it for 13 14 or 15 years so that's also possible as well and therefore it's not predictable anymore exactly when the model will change when the new model will appear but what you can do to protect yourself is simply not to buy the first two years of an all new model don't buy the first year of the facelift buy on the second year if you just keep that in mind then it's pretty safe all the other years are safe and i might actually say the very last year just before the all new model shows up it's usually the best year to buy in terms of long-term reliability and also usually on the last year of production they will throw in all the features that were optional before and it's usually the best value as well so if you really want to buy a safe reliable proven car with no trouble whatsoever before a brand new model shows up actually buy the last year and these days last year also means the last year of a naturally aspirated engine because most manufacturers are introducing turbocharged engines or hybrid engine for the new model and it might just be the last chance to buy naturally aspirated or kind of old-fashioned design so for example i'm driving a nissan frontier right now which has gone through some very very major uh, facelift for 2025 but other than some of these updates it has remained exactly the same for many years now so this facelift here is a safe year to buy so it's not like the facelift has involved change of the powertrain or the whole infotainment system it's not like that they upgraded the screen size they added more new features and so forth but otherwise it's more or less the same so therefore this facelifted year for this nissan frontier is a very safe year to buy in fact this frontier has been around for many years now so generally speaking it's trouble free because it has been out for a long time and so most people get confused about brands they'll say it's because this toyota is reliable if it's nissan maybe it's not reliable but actually the the strongest factor is to do with how long the car has been out so even if you buy a, a car from a somewhat questionable brand if they have been producing that same car for many years it's actually usually pretty stable and usually quite defect free on the other hand if you buy a brand new model from a reputable brands like a toyota or lexus but it's all new model and it's you know basically new from bumper to bumper then you're going to get some problems with some potential for recalls so it is less about the brand these days and it is a lot more about the duration uh, in which the car has been out so the longer it has been out and around the safer it is to buy in terms of reliability of course you buy new cars for many other reasons not just long-term reliability sometimes you just have to change cars because your car broke down or your needs have changed and you want to buy a bigger car or you suddenly need a truck 
and if the timing is such that you have to buy it then sometimes you have to take a chance and you have a, you don't really have much of a choice um, but uh, you can always protect yourself by buying extended warranty or maybe leasing a car instead of buying it uh, and those are things you can do to prevent you from getting stuck with cars that can cause problems in the future and of course how much you drive per year also has a huge impact so you know even if you buy um, a car that's supposed to be safe like it's a second year of facelift but you drive a huge amount of mileage every year then you know when you hit maybe 100,000 kilometers you might begin to have some issues with um, worn out part so those factors will also contribute to whether you're having any kind of problems with the car or not so i hope you enjoyed my video this is kind of like my secret approach to buying a car that's safe to own and will stay reliable i know it's not really secret anymore because i've been talking about it but something that i want to share with you and i hope you can apply it and i'm pretty sure that if you apply that carefully you will always end up with a car that's going to be reliable and stay trouble free for many years to come if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up make some comments because i would love to hear from you and if you haven't done so yet would you kindly subscribe as well until next video i'm signing off for now thank you so much